Cavaliero, who has the biggest fitness YouTube channel in the world, uploaded a video about exercises that he will never do. Seven exercises that I swear I will never do again. Among them, muscle ups, dumbbell rows, ab exercises, knee extensions, but he forgot one thing. There is no bullshit in this channel. Let's begin. So what's up guys, welcome to your fitness pal, six pack. The six pack that you see here is actually a muscle called rectus abdominis. They're called a six pack because of this line in the middle called linea alba, plus the horizontal lines that are called tendinous intersections. And together they create the look of a six pack. But it's not the only muscle in this area. On both sides we also have the obliques that create the V cut shape. And both of those muscles are called the external and internal oblique. But how can we train them? So are you familiar with this exercise? When you hold the dumbbell in one hand and then you bend to your side and come back so that's an amazing way to work on your obliques or is it this guy Jeff Cavalier from athlinex.com athlinex.com.com.com who owns the biggest fitness channel in the world with almost 14 million subscribers uploaded this video what's up guys Jeff Cavalier athlinex.com yeah yeah that cop but what's the video about today I'm gonna share with you seven exercises that I swear I will never do again so Jeff from athlinex came here to put an X on seven exercises that he will never do again and to that video he added another video on another 11 exercises that he will never do again. The 11 worst exercises, you're gonna wanna check that out over here. And that's after another video about the eight worst bodyweight exercises that you can ever perform. The worst bodyweight exercises ever. After five more exercises that are the worst in the universe. Dig up five of the worst exercises that you could be doing. Which adds up to 31 exercises, right? Right, as of now. But what's all the fuss about? Are there really any exercises that you're not allowed to do? And why every exercise that Jeff is going to present is going to hurt you? Or will it? The first exercise is side flexion. Why shouldn't you do it? Because the exercise itself is trash if you're trying to train your oblique. Okay, except from the fact that it's trash. What's the reason? We know guys by now that the obliques are not necessarily side bending muscles. What do they prefer to do? Rotation. Does this muscle really prefer to do rotation? So, not exactly. We know that according to the anatomy, and you can be a part of the anatomy journey here, that the obliques do side flexion. And in this study, the exercise that caused the highest obliques excitation was a side bend. Actually, the rotation exercise rotation came last. Does that mean that you shouldn't do rotation exercises? No, and it's only one study. And we also have more data that shows that even each oblique works differently. For example, the internal oblique is more responsible for rotation, while the external oblique for side flexion. So what did Jeff give instead? Dot com. No, not dot com. What did he give instead? It's a simple side plank lift. And you can see that when I lift myself up, the side that I'm actually training is the underside. Wait a second. If the obliques do not prefer doing a side bend, why did you give as an alternative exercise a side bend? It actually looks like a side bend. Because it's actually the same. Here, gravity pulls his spine to the side and he straightens it. And also here, gravity pulls our spine to the side and we straighten it. Jeff? Dot com, dot com, dot com. So the exercise is actually totally fine. But with the next exercise, we were really frightened. Because we also do this exercise and we guess that so do you. Knee extensions. And we've seen that Jeff has been mad at this exercise for years now. Back in 2010. Really what I'm doing is I'm destroying my knees. 2014. Leg extensions or leg extinctions as I like to call them. And also now. And this is the leg extension. But is it justified? Dot com, dot com. Let's check. Reason number one, overload on our knees. Shearing force that gets placed on our knees. There was a very interesting study. They checked the load on the patellofemoral joint in two exercises, in a squat and in the exercise that Jeff hates. Results. The big stress on the joint was in the squat. Com. But don't let it scare you because stress is not a bad thing. As long as it's not too heavy, too fast, too soon. Claim number two. High tension on the ACL ligament. Constant tension on our ACL ligament. Indeed there is tension, but it's not relevant. According to an article that was published on the NSCA, the tension on the ACL ligament in this exercise is equal to the same tension that you apply on your ligament when you walk. In other words, this exercise is as dangerous to your ACL ligament as walking. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Our knee joints are not connected to each other through duct tapes and bubble gums. The exercise is safe. 
Next. The next one was a biceps exercise. An exercise that not only we do ourselves, we have actually showed it in one of our videos. Which one? <laughs> Concentration curl. Wow, a bit depressing, but why? Most of the time, we actually redirect most of the force into the shoulder as, uh, as opposed to the biceps in the first place. We redirect the force from the biceps to the shoulder? That's a little bit strange. I'm familiar with the different information. More, how do you say? Evidence-based. There was a study with eight exercises for the biceps. The exercise that was first on the list with the most activation was the concentration curve. And it was also first in another study. Why? The researchers said this is probably because the exercise results in a very low muscle excitation of the anterior deltoid. The exact opposite of what Jeff said. Most of the time, we actually redirect most of the force into the shoulder as, uh, as opposed to the biceps in the first place. But, and it's a big but, the fact that a certain exercise has a higher excitation or activation doesn't necessarily mean that in the long term it's best for muscle growth. Dot com, dot com. But, and that's a huge but, that's better than trust me bro, which leads us to the next exercise with the worst outcome, hernia. Hernia is a type of a bulge that comes out of our bodies. But what does this bulge contain? So mostly fat and a little bit of the small intestine which simply slips there. But it's not always in the groins area, it can be also in the belly button. But what does it have to do with Jeff? So Jeff, for years, all the way back to the dinosaur era in 2015. It's the one arm dumbbell row. And again, in case we forgot, in 2018. The worst exercise is. And again, in case we bumped our heads against the wall in 2000. 2022 said that he doesn't like the exercise. I don't like this exercise. Why? Very simple. Worst exercise is when it comes to causing hernias in the gym. And before we'll get another reminder in 2025, 2028, 3004, and 4003, Pay attention. Having a hernia and blaming a certain exercise as the cause for that is a lot harder to prove than you think. It's like saying I drank milk, my head hurts, it's from the milk. So no, there are a lot more reasons for a headache and the correlation does not necessarily mean causation. It's funny how he said that it's being caused from a dumbbell row and he forgot to mention that it also has a genetic component. It's more common in older individuals. The risk increases with the lower BMI, also with a high intra-abdominal pressure and literally give information from the literature. <laughs> Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. By the way, a quick Google search can bring us to an article literally titled It is highly unlikely that the development of an abdominal wall hernia can be attributable to a single strenuous event. A good read. Which means that this exercise is also safe, right? Right. Until at least 2025. Dot com. But we're not done yet. We're sure that Jeff has good intentions. And he also looks like a decent guy. I mean, do we even have to talk about this one? But no matter who you are, you need to base the information you provide with sufficient and updated scientific evidence. Especially with those types of claims. Worst exercise is when it comes to causing hernias in the gym. It's important to say there are no bad exercises. There are only exercises that feel bad. Don't forget to comfort them. In addition, you need to manage your loads, work according to your goals, overload according to your previous experience, and all of that can influence which exercise you choose. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share this video with each and every person that you know that ever typed in the keyboard.com. Write down here in the comments which video you would like to see next. We will see you in the next one that will even be crazier than this one. Bye bye.